Welcome back, you made it. In the uh, last video, we wrote some JavaScript code and got up and running with the 24A2 game framework. We started with the tutorial and then added logic to show a yellow trail of the dots that our player has visited. So let's continue with that and add in some ripple animation for that trail. Uh, the plan for this video is to animate um, horizontal or vertical ripples depending on the player's movement. So if we move this way, the ripples would come out the top and bottom. Here they would come out the sides. So the first thing we'll do is modify the update function and we'll key off the direction to classify whether they're moving horizontally or vertically. <clears throat> so let's do that here. We'll take this, and we'll just do Okay, if direction is up or direction is down, we will, var is not a keyword. I don't know what to call this, so um, we'll do, we'll just call it horizontal. So if you yeah, have directions up or down, then horizontal can remain a zero to signify vertical movement. And of course we can shorten this. We could um, just do that. So if, I'm pretty sure this is the right way to do that in JavaScript. Oh, right, there's some typos there, cool. So if um, direction is left or right, this would evaluate to true and set horizontal to true. And we'll add that here. And we also need to decide how the ripples are, like what they're gonna look like. Um, whether they'll be multicolor, uh, how long the ripples will go out for, the speed of their spread, etc. But I, I think we should just start simple and stick to a single color uh, length of eight, just for the for giggles, and then update every game frame. So you know, the dots will change every frame of animation, basically every call to update. Okay, now that we have the direction in there. Um, let's also store for this position the frame of the animation that we're at currently. So every every scene position will start at frame zero of the ripple animation. And then we'll increment it as we roll through those. So I think what we'll do So we're storing the direction, and then we're the, storing the frame. So I guess we need to loop over this here. Actually, possibly not loop, but actually we will because we need to push the dot out further and further. So what if I did, and I may have to change this, but um, uh, let's see here. Is item three. We'll do i less than. Is that right? I don't know. Let's just start with simple. Thought I had a plan and then I forgot. Um, all right. So let's get the logic to set the next, um, set the first dot. 
So if chords two, then we are moving horizontal. And we should um, we should change the dot. Nope, oh, that's not the right key. Delete, delete. Let's do orange just for now. All right, and we're actually going to. Um, <clears throat> two dots and they would be let's see frame let's just do this so we don't have to ideally we should refactor this to be a struct or you know to have each position in scene be an object with keys so we know what we're dealing with. Um, we could do that real quick. All right. Actually, let's just not. Let's continue. Because I'll probably have to do another take of this video. Hee <laughs> hee. All right. Uh, we have the whether it's horizontal, what frame we're at, and we'll change that. And Let's see, so that's our X, that's our... We'll add frame to that value. Okay, so if we're moving horizontally, then we actually need to add it to the Y chord. <clears throat> and then subtract it from the Y chord. And very similar for here. We're going to have issues when we get to the grid boundaries, but we'll deal with that when we get there. Um, okay, so right now this will go to each scene position. Set that trail color to yellow. Pull out the direction, that dot, um, the direction we were moving when we made that dot. Get the frame count. For horizontal motion, we're going to set a dot above and below the current yellow trail dot. We're going to set it to orange. And then for vertical motion, we're going to set it to the left and right. Now that won't, it'll only update the dot immediately after, and it won't change anything. Let's just see what it does. Okay, so it's updating. Right, because our frame count starts at zero. It basically squashes our yellow dot, which is fine. Okay, so let's only do this. Um, greater than zero as I will probably have to refactor this too so if we do that then it won't do anything because we never increment frame um, let's increment frame frame was three okay and that's gonna keep incrementing frame every time so we should probably only do this logic if, oh, let's do it down here. If frames less than nine, I guess, we'll just do that. So that way we don't iterate or increment past that value. <laughs> Neat. 
Neat. <laughs> okay. Um, I kind of want to slow it down, and I'm not sure whether I want to adjust the game frame rate or uh, do some throttling in how often we update the uh, frame counter for this ripple animation. But I'll decide that later. So let's not do speed yet. Um, that's cool. Oh, what the hell was that? Ah, oh nice. Trying to set dot. 1124, Y is out of bounds. Okay, good to know. So that's kind of unfortunate. That means that I will need to detect that when I update these dots for the animation. Also, that probably means if I had tried to move off screen initially. Oh, ha. Cool. Let's fix that. Actually, I think that was part of the tutorial that we skipped. Hey, look at this. Direction is up and player is greater than zero, then... Um, decrement? Okay, so it won't decrement, or won't decrement below zero. Let's add this in, just to make sure that the player motion won't make us crash. That's a good idea. Sorry, I think my hands are tired. I'm going really slow with the mouse. It's been a long week at work. Okay, let's try this now, and then we can't move. Oh, neat. Can't move beyond the edges. <laughs> cool. Um, oh, right. So one thing is with this game framework, you cannot hold down the arrow key. It won't keep firing the key press, so you have to actually release and press again. So if you want to get really fast, you have to actually tap it multiple times. Okay, let's start there. I think this is getting a little bit long. And next time, I'm not sure what we'll do. We'll change something with the animation. Maybe instead of a yellow, or sorry, an orange dot emanating out, we will add multicolors and perhaps change the speed that the ripples come out. Cool. Thanks again. See ya.